everyone to our fourth episode for the 2021 State of Security Operations video series, where we cover insights from the new State of Security Operations report available at www.cyberres.com slash state of SecOps. The report offers a snapshot of global security operations in 2021, pulling from the experiences of over 500 security operations executives and decision makers. Over the course of this series, we'll be interviewing C-level SecOps experts from CyberRes who contributed to the report. This week, we'll be interviewing CyberRes's International Chief Technology Officer, Ramses Gallego. With background education in business administration and law, Ramses has built a career of over 22 years in the areas of IT government and risk management. Based out of Barcelona, Ramses holds certifications in information security, enterprise IT governance, information systems security, and cloud security knowledge. He is a renowned international speaker who has traveled to dozens of countries to speak about cybersecurity and IT governance, and has won multiple awards while doing so. We're very lucky to have him join us today. Welcome, Ramses. Oh, thanks for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to share, you know, insights from the from the report, and again, a privilege to be with all of you today. Okay, so to kick us off, what's one thing that surprised you from the report? Well, one thing is that the this the the concept of the attack surface management, that discipline of an expanding, ever-growing, uh, uh, in-expansion attack uh, surface. You know, the, the surface of attacks expanding in these very troubled times in the hopefully post-pandemic epoch that we are living. One thing that has not stopped is, is the cyber criminals, you know, the, 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 the business of cyber crime. So that idea of more attacks coming with 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 uh, diverse device techniques and, and and methodologies that they are using unfortunately the attackers the offenders that thing that has not stopped and we have uh, uh, covered that on the on the report another thing is that the advanced security technologies that most socks are using i was i was uh, gladly surprised of knowing that 79 percent if i recall correctly of socks are using advanced security technologies and that includes and probably we'll talk about it, machine learning and then anomaly detection. And, and the whole idea, if I have to summarize it in one thing, the whole idea of intelligence, the whole idea of, of not just threat hunting, but threat intelligence, gathering and, and, and gathering information and then intelligence in order to, to, to go for uh, after the, the threats and, and hunting for threats. That, that, was, that, was, uh, uh, that was a surprise, a, glad, a, a good surprise. Yeah, yeah, for me too. It was great to see such a expanding uh, adoption of each one of those things. So um, another thing in the report, one of your C-level insights that you shared was to keep security operations teams sharp and updated by uh, conducting regular drills, trainings, and exercises. So can you elaborate on that point and on anything else you'd recommend SOCs do to keep their teams proficient? Well, absolutely. Uh, uh, let, let me be very clear. Training, continuous training, I would say, is fundamental, it's critical for success, isn't it? Meaning, because the attackers are using new techniques and new approaches, and I was just mentioning the, the idea, the, 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 the fundamental aspect of new in intelligence, you know, training and getting people up to speed with, with new approaches and, 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 and better detection and, and identification techniques, it is, it is absolutely fundamental. Actually, I, I massively celebrate how the report is divided into the sections of technology, people, and processes, you know, the typical triad on people, process, and technologies. But on, on mm -hmm. my answer and my contribution uh, to the report is about, let's not forget culture, structure, and strategy. And, and as a consequence, I, I celebrate your question because training and, and, and education and, and, and inspiration, I would say, is fundamental because at the end of the day, yes, we use technology, but there are cyber analysts, there are people, young professionals and veteran professionals, excelling and, and, and sharpening you know the, the the good techniques so so it, it is fundamental training and i would say in capitals is an absolute uh, uh, fundamental aspect of any modern sock that that we have to do so techniques intelligence and, and all those sort of things absolutely yeah thank you yeah well another thing that we've spoken about um in every week is how between the pandemic and the significant breaches that occurred in the past year there's been a lot of evolution and change within security operations so what are some of the biggest changes you've seen in the industry and how do you expect that those changes will impact secops teams going forward oh wow you know well COVID 19 has shown very ugly faces one of them is being you know change, meaning change overnight, 
in some countries, I don't know your countries, but in my country, that was on, on a Friday, March the 13th. I mean, the world changed overnight. So the idea of change because of COVID and as a consequence in the in the industry and in businesses and organizations and societies at large has been fundamentals. One thing that, that I always say to my teams is that the velocity, the variety and the volume of change, the three V's of change, right? So because of COVID, the velocity, the variety, and the volume of change are fundamental aspects also for SOC, you know? When it comes to, you know, people never, ever again going back to the office, but they still need access, right? So mm -hmm. as a consequence, I need to be properly authenticated and properly identified and properly authorized. And the SOC needs to know. But then what happens with the whole concept of UEBA, you know, user and entity behavior analytics? Well, what happens when a machine or a thing actually declares an identity. So this COVID-19 difficult afar or from away times has shown that uh, it is fundamental to know patterns of behavior. It is fundamental to the, the capabilities and the skills to detect anomalies. And for that, machine learning and the algorithms will certainly help us on, on those aspects. So, so again, still people and things Grant, uh, need access to, to, to do things, to, 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 to elaborate and, and to deliver. But then the SOC, as, as the, the single instance of the truth, as a nuclear, I would say, tool for a business tool at the end of the day, that's what a SOC is, they need to know about accesses and then authorizations and then patterns of behavior and then being able of detecting, identifying, you know, preventing, all those things are fundamental. And when you combine that with my previous answer, and then the training and the awareness, uh, the, the super capabilities that this modern SOC that we are talking about provides, that's second to none, and certainly, a, 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 you know, a nuclear weapon, if I may call it like that, a nuclear tool for the businesses of today, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and your comment actually fits very well with a couple of the past interviews we've had. One with uh, with Stan Wisman. He talked a little bit about the the remote work and how that's affected the SecOps teams. And and then um, we also had uh, Stefan Zhu talked about the that behavior analytics aspect that you were you were also just covering. And I think all those those comments go really well together. So wanted to bring those up as well, just for anyone on here that hasn't seen the earlier episodes, go check out our, our playlist for this video series and you can see uh, see those past interviews as well. But yeah, thank you, Ramses. So an another comment, uh, you actually had a few comments in the report about this, but uh, one of those comments was you said, um, having preemptive detection techniques and then acting promptly has become part of the DNA at your mm -hmm. socks. So what are what are some of the processes and procedures you've implemented to detect and respond to threats as quickly as possible? Well, that's um, thanks for the question again, but it's 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 very important to use to use technology to our advantage, meaning the algorithms and preemptive detection. I always say uh, to my teams and uh, is that the moment to help is before it happens. <laughs> if you want to help me, <laughs> the moment to do that is before anything happens, if you can. And as a consequence, then preemptive detection and then using the MITRE attack framework, you know, the, the adversarial tactics, techniques and, and common knowledge, because I always say that the book has been written and because the book of attack mostly has been written, then you know how they can, how they're trying to gain access and how they're trying to escalate privileges and how offenders and cyber criminals and attackers alike, they try to do, you know, lateral movements and exfiltrate data. Because of that, you you can have the the, the help of algorithms and machine learning in order to to go to go hunt for threats, to do preemptive detection, the moment to help is before it happens, to guess what's next, the next move, in order not just to correlate, uh, but, but to but to super correlate, if I may use the, the verb, you know, super correlate different instances of, of, of one, one truth, but different uh, scenarios in order to know that you are about to be, not under an attack, but about to be under an attack because that smells like a, like an attack. This is, this is fundamental. And again, using technology, machine learning, and supervised machine learning, by the way, you know, the, 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 the algorithm learns by observing what's happening, rather than by example, rather than by training the algorithm, that it's it's great, it's cool. I I actually love how the modern saw can can use algorithms that learn by observing and then guessing, you know, again, patterns of behavior or anomalies uh, and fraud. This is absolutely fundamental. So preemptive detection are are and the processes that come with it, processes, procedures, guidelines, best practices. Well, that's the name of the game for success for a sock, uh, in, in, in my opinion, absolutely.
Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to answer these questions with us today. Uh, you provided a lot of valuable insights for our mm -hmm. viewers to to think about and to apply in their own socks. So, uh, for those who would like who would like to learn more about the uh, state of security operations, again, we recommend that you access the full report at www.cyberes.com slash statussecops and then subscribe to our channel and watch for the fifth and final episode of this video series coming next week. Uh, so, thank you again, Ramses, and uh, thanks everyone for watching. Have a great week. It was week. a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.